lots of us are spending a lot of time with the people in our house, our family maybe. How's that going? Wonder if I heard some stories about uh, how people are treating each other, if all the stories would be positive, happy ones. Seems to me that when families talk, when people who've known each other a long time talk, one of the phrases that comes up quite a lot is, remember when you, it seems like when things have been done wrong to us, these are sometimes the things that are hardest to let go of. A man called Joseph, uh, near the end of a collection of songs and stories and poems that we call Genesis at the beginning of a collection of books we call the Bible, has stories he could tell about his family have treated him. He may have been a spoiled teenager, his father's favourite, parading around in his new coat, but that doesn't justify that his brothers wanted to kill him, that they only just decided not to kill him and instead they sold him into slavery. He spent years in slavery, often years in prison in an empire called Egypt. Near the end of the book of Genesis, Joseph's family find themselves back in their land of Canaan and facing starvation because there is a famine. Jacob, Joseph's father, also known as Israel, knows that there is food in Egypt and so he sends 10 of Joseph's brothers to Egypt because that's where the food is. When they arrive, the brothers meet the second in command of the Egyptian empire. This is Joseph. They don't know that. They don't know what's happened to Joseph. They don't even know if Joseph is alive and they bow down before this Egyptian official. Joseph recognises them. They don't recognise him. He remembers as he sees them bow down a dream. In this story, dreams are, are better referred to as visions or messages. It's not the kind of thing that keeps you up at night. These visions that Joseph had early on were about his brothers bowing down to him. And here are his brothers bowing down to him. But he doesn't mention it. He doesn't mention the years of suffering that he's had. Now, I don't know anyone who, given the opportunity to tell um, and face up people who've done wrong to you about it, who don't take the opportunity to tell that story again, to say, remember when you, to rub it in. But Joseph doesn't mention it. Joseph has every right not to expect much from his brothers at all. Joseph has every right to want just one thing from his brothers, revenge. And we might think that's what he's up to when he starts to speak angrily to them. He calls them spies, which is ironic when one of the first things they complained about him as a teenager was that he would tell tales on them to his father. It seems instead of revenge that Joseph is interested in testing his brothers. He first talks about putting them in prison, he puts them all in prison. And then he, he, he turns around and says, actually, I'm just, I could put one of you in prison if the rest of you are, want to go back with the food. It's as if he's testing to see if they will abandon one of their family, which is what they did to him. And as he's interacting with them, as he's pushing them and provoking them and watching them react, he, he at the same time keeps breaking down, weeping, but having to hide it from them. They expect, they see, a representative of the empire. He's supposed to be cold and calculating and ruthless. Instead, what he really is, is passionate. He's an Israelite. This is his family. Another test that Joseph puts on them is that as he sends them back, he says they have to send his, their brother, Benjamin. What is he doing here? It's not clear in the story if Joseph even really knows what he is doing. And it's not made clear to us either. 
It seems like he's testing again how they're treating a brother who may well be a favourite. Jacob, or Israel, known by both names, had four wives. And only one of them he truly loved, Rachel. And Joseph and Benjamin are Rachel's sons. He thinks Joseph's dead. Benjamin is all he has left of his favourites. How is this going to work out? The brothers go back to Canaan with the food and with the bad news that Benjamin will have to come if they need more food. And as time passes, that's exactly what happens as the famine years continue. And so when the time comes when they have to set off back and it becomes a clear that Benjamin is going to have to go, what's fascinating is that one of the brothers called Judah speaks up and says, as Benjamin goes with us, I will take the blame, the responsibility for everything, anything that happens to him. This is a change. But it's not a change that Judah probably realises. What's fascinating, uh, in the moments when Joseph doesn't see what the brothers are doing, that they talk amongst themselves, and when they talk amongst themselves, they can only focus on one thing. The choices they made in the past, how terrible they were, and how since then everything is going to be bad all the time. Anything that happens to them is their fault because of their guilt. They can only see themselves with self-loathing. It's as if, despite Joseph being the one sold into slavery, his brothers are the ones who for these years have been slaves, trapped by their guilt, trapped by their view of themselves as brothers who made a terrible, terrible choice and the consequences will always be bad and they can see no sense or sign or hope of a different future. They're even more bewildered when they come back to Egypt for the food, expecting punishment or prison or or, or more suffering, and instead they're given a huge feast. More than that, they're sat in their birth order, as if there's some knowledge here that they don't know about. And Benjamin has five times as much as everyone else. As Joseph tests again, how is the favourite going to be treated here? How are the brothers going to react to this? Eventually they travel back with the food towards Canaan. And on the journey they're stopped and as their bags are searched, the last bag searched is Benjamin's and in it is a special silver cup. Now the consequences of this are death. Again, Judah speaks up and Judah speaks up and says he can't face, the brothers can't deal with their father having to face any more grief. This is a complete change. When they sold Joseph into slavery, they couldn't care less that Joseph, uh, Jacob thought he was dead. He then says that they will not, he will not allow Benjamin to be put to death. Instead, he offers himself in his place, the ultimate act of self-sacrifice. What was it Jesus of Nazareth said about the greatest love anyone can have is to lay down his life for his brother. Joseph, at this point in the story, can, can't control himself anymore. Reading the story, I can't control myself anymore. Somehow, through these tests, through these interactions, through struggling all the time with his emotions, Joseph has allowed his brothers to see their guilt. And more than that, to see change. To realise and face up to the consequences of what they've done and then have the opportunities to show that things are different. It's a possibility they couldn't see, but perhaps Joseph could. They could only see guilt and self-loathing. They were trapped, but Joseph could perhaps see more. They couldn't see a different future of change. But here, they've had the chance to demonstrate, faced with the same challenge of whether they will sacrifice a brother for their own safety and welfare, have chosen instead love and self-sacrifice, which is what they were made for, which is what we were all made for. The Hebrew word for change is teshuva. We translate it sometimes repent, which is 
um, often associated with feeling bad, but instead the world means to turn around, to change, to come back to who you were made to be. Joseph, it seems, has faith in the possibility of change. That is the big dream, the vision, the project that God had in mind from the start of the story. That's the way lived out in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. A dream of the possibility and the hope of turning things around, of getting back on track. That's a dream that God, this God, won't allow to be stopped.